most important application on your computer will soon cease to exist. Yes, I'm talking about your browser. Most likely it's Chrome, Edge or Safari, but it won't be replaced by a new competitor. Attempts like Arc or Brave Browser have already shown that a better version isn't enough. It will be replaced by an entirely new idea of what it means to access the internet. And no, this isn't about AI, AR, Web3 or any other buzzword. In fact, you've already lived through one death like this. It was the mobile app which pushed the browser on your phone into irrelevance. If you think about it, apps simply got rid of the middlemen and became their own browsers for specific services. So what's stopping the same thing from happening on the desktop? Many things, but they are all surmountable. Right now, we're at a tipping point. A paradigm shift is imminent. The conditions are finally right for change. To understand what happened and why it matters, we need to look at what a browser even is, why Google is the reason for its global stagnation, where were technology design and features during the both browser wars, why they happened, why they always ended badly for us, the users. And finally, we will design a new kind of browser from scratch, based on the principles that make our favorite apps so loved. To understand the problem, you have to understand that the internet wasn't born out of a clean master plan. It was chaos. And at the center of that chaos were the first browser war. Microsoft saw Netscape's early success and did what monopolies do best. They licensed the source code for Spyglass Mosaic and used it to build Internet Explorer. Then they gave it away for free, bundled with every copy of Windows. While this strategy cost them around $8 million, it ultimately proved to be a victory of distribution, not product. And what's funny is that the modern web runs on a technology that was famously created in the same year in just 10 days. Yes, it's JavaScript. That was back in 1995, and today around 99% of all websites use it. So when Monopoly wins, innovation dies. I remember the pain of that era personally. Spending an entire weekend fighting to make a simple block with rounded corners and a drop shadow look the same in IE6. We weren't fighting for innovation. We were fighting just to make things work. As Netscape was losing market share, it made one last revolutionary move. In 1998, the struggling company open-sourced its code, which eventually, like a phoenix, rose from the ashes as Firefox. The 1.0 release of Firefox in 2004 marked the start of the second browser war. Everyone was tired of Internet Explorer holding the industry back, but this war was more complex. Suddenly, other players appeared. Apple's Safari, launched in 2003, was notably standards compliant for its time, winning praise for its early adoption of key technologies. But the main surprise was Google Chrome. It was built on the new V8 JS engine, which was several times faster than Firefox in most benchmarks. It had a minimal interface and the world's most visited website to promote it. Then Google set the perfect trap. In 2008, they open-sourced the browser itself as Chromium, building an ecosystem around it. By May 2012, Chrome had officially surpassed Internet Explorer globally, and in 2013, they cemented their control by forking the rendering engine into their own, called Blink. The result, a new, even more powerful monopoly. As a designer, I've seen it all before. New tools that claim to revolutionize creative work, but end up just repackaging the same limitations with a nicer interface. That's why it's so refreshing when something actually changes how we work, like Recraft, today's sponsor. At our studio, we've been using Recraft to create mockups for client campaigns, t-shirts, banners, digital screens. Normally, that would take hours in Photoshop. With Recraft, we generate high-quality brand consistent mockups in under five minutes. But what really stands out is the level of control. Recraft lets you define custom styles, maintain visual consistency across assets, and collaborate in a shared canvas, whether you're working with raster images or fully editable vector graphics. It's a tool built for designers who care about consistency, speed, and creative flow. And while this is a sponsored segment, the truth is we'd be using Recraft anyway. You can try it for free using the link in the description and unlock the full potential for $1 with the code LOVERS11. And what about Apple? On iOS and iPadOS, Apple historically forbade other browsers from using their own engine. While this has changed in the EU since uh, 2024 due to new regulations, for the rest of the world, the rule still stands. Any Chrome or Firefox on iPhone is just a mask or Safari's engine WebKit. With no real competition on their own platform, why rush to innovate? It's in these seemingly hopeless systems that the most radical shifts occur. They happen not when someone plays the old game slightly better, but when the rules of the game themselves change. To understand the new rules, I've been researching what makes us truly love the software we use. The answer comes down to four pillars. Extensibility. 
we love to build upon our tools. Plugins, themes and workflows turn us from passive consumers into active co-creators. Ownership and control. In the age of clouds and subscriptions, the ability to truly own your data or buy a program forever builds a level of trust that can't be bought. Performance and flow. The tool must be lightning fast. Delays and crashes are the main enemy of love for an app. Strong ethos and responsiveness. We want to feel that the developers are on our side, whether it's through a focus on privacy or simply fast human customer support. And here's a challenge for you. Open your phone right now. Look at your three to four favorite apps. I guarantee each of them excels at least three of these four principles. Let me know which ones in the comments. By the way, this list is part of the deep research I'm doing. The most interesting findings and articles that don't fit into a video I collect in my free weekly email digest. If you're interested in that level of depth, the link is in the description. And so, based on these principles, I am designing a new browser. Not for everyone, but for a niche audience that values these four pillars. This is a massive and complex project. And so I invite you to subscribe and follow along in real time as I attempt to build the very thing that might one day replace the browser as we know it. If you want to see how these principles work in practice on a real client project right now, I recommend watching this video next. It's about how we created a full brand identity using AI tools in just 72 hours.